We continue me playing hardcore of this. Alright. This is, like, part of a lengthier stream on Twitch. If you're watching from YouTube, assuming you are. You know. I have survived two acts. Now, uh... Let's see. I might just swap into this already. How does that affect me? This is what I want to see. 17, 37, 28, 30. Oh. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. Sweet. Alright, I should be in a much better position. Also moving quicker. More armor, moving quicker. Um, I'll swap out the shield at the next level. Uh, follower level 21. We'll get that. Okay. I got some water. But yeah, to be honest, today I'm probably just gonna spend most of the day chilling. I didn't really feel like doing much. I've had, like, a bit of a long week, so... This is probably what I'm gonna do all day today and <laughs> maybe watch some movies or something later. Everyone needs a break. This is where I'm kind of going to hit my stride now, like... I do have to watch myself, but... Damn it! Ah! Yeah, that. <laughs> Fire. It's okay. That's why we have the purple potions on the right button. Panic button, whenever I see my health, like, dip. It's okay, next level, my... It should stop happening, at least, for this difficulty. I like that my, uh, spear or javelin matches my shield. It's all red. fix this. There we go. Matching gear is very important in the modeling community. I mean, with transmogs it is. With this, you didn't really have much of a choice. If I miss the ball, I will see. Still having issues with stamina. Oh, <laughs> 
Well, I mean, the thing is, like, if you're playing softcore, sometimes people use lower armors as bases, so then you can use them sooner across other multiple characters, but... I don't know. The other thing is heavier armors have a movement speed penalty. Which I, I get, but it just means you don't use them. Yeah. People tend to use light armors, but I think for hardcore you have to use the heavy armors. Or maybe you don't have to, but it's probably a good idea to. I haven't really looked into it, to be honest. Wait, who sells stamina potions? Well, you don't. Oh, whatever. This act is the most annoying act, I think. <laughs> In terms of navigation. Maybe not enemy types. Massive jungle labyrinth. One thing I'm very happy about lately, uh, I've gotten multiple people into watching uh, the rehearsal. They're hooked on it. Even though it's a very short series, like, they enjoy it thoroughly. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen any of Nathan Fielder's show, you should. Especially the rehearsal, the new one. The dude is the king of, uh, like... Just awkward and, uh... Like, dry sense of humor. He's really good. But I think with this new show, he's just dialed it up even further. The amount of meta jokes he makes is, is kind of crazy. The rehearsal, any specific platform. Uh, it's on HBO. But, uh, yeah, I watched it through other means, let's just say. Since HBO is not available in Australia. But, uh, I've talked about it. The, the premise of the show pretty much is that he lets people who are sort of overthinking something to kind of practice it, right? So the first episode, without spoiling too much, you meet this guy who, uh, has sort of stretched the truth about his education. Not here. And so, Nathan kind of hones in on that very, you know, uh, like, uh, the dude's overthinking it way too much. It's not a big deal, but he thinks it's a big deal. So Nathan, of course, preys on this. <laughs> and sets up a rehearsal so he can rehearse this. They think of every single possible thing that could happen when that conversation goes down. And he goes to, like, a, an extreme extent to kind of, like, let this dude's mind kind of play out. And it's kind of fascinating the extent this dude is willing to go in terms of overthinking before he actually goes and has the conversation. So, that's the basic premise, and then he does it to other people. And the budget on that show would have been insane. It's, uh, it's definitely worth a watch. I think it's probably one of my more favorite shows as of late. I mean, Better Call Saul was good too, but... In terms of comedy, this is definitely one of the better comedy shows that has come out recently. 
And if you haven't seen his original show, Nathan for you, it's it's also a very good watch. That one, um, he approaches real businesses and he offers his services as a business consultant. And he comes up with crazy marketing ideas, more or less, to make the business more noticeable. And a lot of the time, it's just stupid and it doesn't work. So, yeah. It's... I appreciate his, his comedy, because he's just very, very dry. Very, very weird television, that, but if you appreciate weird TV, you will enjoy it. I think I may have gotten a good map. Like, that was pretty painless in terms of finding the waypoint and the cave I needed to go in. This map can be a bitch, <laughs> to say the least. You can get layouts where it's just gonna take you a good hour to navigate it. I guess I gotta go right. Well, sometimes it'll be straightforward and it'll be linear. Random is random. Just, I just want my stamina back. <laughs> okay, this is where the waypoint should be, hopefully. Ooh, careful, teleporter. No, it's just... Okay. It just lagged onto me. That's the other thing about hardcore is just lag. Because I don't think there are Australian servers to this. I am playing on American servers. I'm fairly certain. So... Playing hardcore was always a ballsy decision <laughs> in terms of playing from Australia. Yeah, there it is. Cool. I think my music may have stopped. It's okay, I need to go back to town anyway. I may have reached the end of the playlist, which is interesting. I oh, know. Okay, it was just a quiet intro, never mind. Not back in never. Good morning. Okay, uh let's get the ever important shield. Sorry, just checking. Okay, we got a bit to go. Right. Oh, that's much better. Ah, oh, there we go. Aside from fire, everything is is at max resistance for this. So. Not here. Well, praise you. Okay, things are gonna get less stressful now. Um, I could still die. It's just. 
Can I dump everything into combat stats and be a hyperglass cannon? Uh, it's... The thing is, stats don't correlate to damage, so to speak, in Diablo 2. Like... For example, Amazonian, if you're doing throw, the damage comes from the actual... Uh... Skill point. So, like... I could use the, my starting javelin, and it would scale with this damage. But then if I went a physical build, um... Like... Strength gives attack- it gives, uh... You can see it here. So it does give you attack damage. And then... It'll give you, uh... The ability to equip more armor. And then this increases attack rating. Attack rating is the odds of landing a hit on particular enemies. Not every single attack is affected by attack rating. Hello. So that's that's how it plays a bit different. Like generally speaking, the meta for this is um, your character should roughly end up with about 150 of each primary stat. And then everything else into Vitality, unless you're playing um, a particular build of Sorceress called Energy Shield, which then, instead of Vitality, you do Energy. Because there's not a whole lot of point in putting more stats into that. Like, it does increase your attack rating, but health is more valuable in this game. Not in town. So I think the way that I play it is like, for the first difficulty, I'll have roughly 60-60, and then by the end of the second difficulty I try to like have 156 in strength, and then slowly get dexterity where it needs to be. Not every character needs to have high dexterity, but strength. I think the consensus is like 156. So then you equip the middle tier armor as most people don't use high tier. I think for hardcore I might have to end up with over 200 strength just to make sure I can equip the super heavy stuff. Can someone mess up their character? Uh, you can mess up your character in the sense that you might not have a good stat distribution to survive. Or a skill distribution. But, uh... At the start of each difficulty, you can respec. Like, there's a quest that gives you the option to respec. So you get three respecs if you want. And then, if you want to respec later... Uh, you beat... Bosses... And some of them can drop a, a material. And once you find all four materials, it'll let you respec. So... This is definitely a game where you should follow a, a build guide. Because, uh... I mean, you can get away with not following one. And be fine for the most part. But I think if you want to get through the highest difficulty, you probably... Should follow a build guide. With this... Because I'm playing hardcore, it's like... Sort of following what the build guide... For this character is. The difference being, like, I, I've put points into the passives sooner, because I feel like the dodge chance are just invaluable for this. Whereas in, in softcore, it doesn't matter if you die. Yeah, I mean, the reason this genre appeals to me is, like, you're building towards something. Like, your character gets stronger and stronger, gets more abilities, you get gear, you replace it, and you have to make decisions about gear. So, it's up my alley. But it can also be played in a very casual way. Like, you don't have to go to that extent. I think I'm sort of in the middle. Like, I'm not to the extent where I'm doing spreadsheets and numbers, but I care enough about it that I will try to find a good build and sort of cater it to what I like playing. But of course you can pretty much just follow a guide and 
have a shopping list and yeah, just play through the game and not really care too much about what you're wearing. I think that's the great thing about this. I forgot to get stamina potions. Ugh. Uh, this is interesting, though. The Great Marsh usually leads towards the Flayer Jungle. It would have to be around here. So much for having a straightforward map. <laughs> I mean, if you consider how old this game is, it still holds up, like... Now that it has this visual overhaul. Does a sprint meter? Yeah, I mean, it, all, it only... It only really has an effect on you early game. Later on, your character has enough strength and stamina that... Um, it doesn't really come into play that often. It's just like, an, they tried to do a layer of difficulty with stamina. It's locked. It's... It's not a great mechanic. I feel like they could have done something else with it. They're like... I'm surprised that, um... For example, the... The Barbarian... Doesn't use stamina as a resource instead of mana. Like, that would... See, that would make sense. But instead, like, the Barbarian... Has mana as well and can run into mana problems with certain attacks. I think it would have been cool if the Barbarian, like, had its mana pool, but then if it depleted, would start using stamina instead. But... It uses Rage in D3. Yeah, but, I mean, that's just... Ooh, jeez. It's a different form of mana, it's just something that replenishes on hit, which is a good system. That's something they got right. But I think for this, it's primary resource at the end of the day. That's what they called it. For this, they could have, uh, I don't know. They could have used stamina for uh, something other than sprinting. Yeah, I feel like at this point it's easier to just go to the spider. Stay a while and listen. Greetings. Who sells stamina potions, though? Not I'll have to find out. Hello there. Not here. Hmm. Maybe this dude. Not in. From the. That's the one complaint I have. It's like, I get it. I get why. Because this is, like, structured in an old RPG game. Where, you know, you have a vendor that sells potions. One that sells you weapons. You have a blacksmith that repairs your stuff. And they're all different stores. And, you know, you, you walk around town. And it's, it's a world. Like, I, I get it. I, I truly do. <laughs> but I do miss the modern D3 where like every single vendor sells everything and you can just go to one and it doesn't matter and the vendors are conveniently placed near the uh, the waypoints and everything you don't have to go looking this act has the worst map because the person that repairs is on one side of the map the person that sells you potions is on another, it's just... Oh, sorry, the gambling one. It's way too spread out. Okay, this should hopefully lead in the right direction.
You know one thing I've been very tempted to do? <laughs> but I'm not sure anyone would want to watch it, is like, going through Diablo 3's story. Cause it's been... Fuck, it's been like a... A very long time since I experienced it. I did go through this game's story in a separate video, like, off-stream, and I uploaded them to YouTube. It was sort of like a test bed to see if anyone would watch YouTube videos without them necessarily being on Twitch first. Oh, crap. Okay. Let's pick up any mana and healing. What if I go back to a previous patch and play vanilla? Um, I don't know if you can do that. Because it all works off online servers. I think the only way to do it would be to get like the PlayStation 3 game. Because that was vanilla Diablo 3. And it didn't get upgraded, to my understanding. So that would require getting a PS3 and a PS3 copy of Diablo 3, which isn't out of the question. It wouldn't be hard to do. It would certainly be an interesting thing to do. found the waypoint. I know that it would be a much harder game. However, however, there is certain things that I now have knowledge of that I didn't back then that would make it easy. Like some of the insanely broken stuff that was in the game at launch. Like, the monk had really broken skills that had to get patched multiple times. Like, Exploding Palm used to scale off health, enemy health. So that was the meta for a while, was like... Exploding Palm was the way to deal damage. And, uh, I mean, not that it would work, but if you, if you were in a group, uh, four monks stacking their auras would pretty much be untouchable. There was also, uh, another one where if you got enough attack speed on a monk, exploding palm did percent health. Yeah, it was, it was a meta for a while where the monk would just tank up would do no damage, and their job was pretty much to use Cyclone Strike and drop Exploding Palm on targets, and then everyone else would be DPS. And the moment one target exploded, everything in the pack exploded. Because you would get this item where, upon explosion, your Exploding Palm would apply to adjacent targets. So people were clearing endgame content very quickly, and then they were like, uh-uh, nah. Not allowed. And they changed it to be, um, weapon percent instead. But the thing was, like, people shrugged off Exploding Palm for the longest amount of time. It was in the game for ages, and then one day, like, someone was like, Yo, this, this skill is actually pretty fucking busted in group play. Like, if the monk act just tanks up, does nothing other than... Just keep enemies chain stunned. And just makes resistances maximum, health max, like... You can get through some pretty high-end content. The monk was the most powerful character in that game. Just, if you go by the number of times it was, like, his skills were either reworked or nerfed, because they were too good. That character had the most. 
Like, it is, it is easily the best class in that game. It does- it didn't matter what the meta was, the monk was always in group play. Whereas in the damage- the so-called damage-based classes, I guess, they kind of fell in and out. Every other class has kind of cycled in and out. I just want- uh, the thing that I, I wonder if, like, the PS3 version of the game had offline play. Because I think that was the difference between the console games and the PC games. Was that, uh, console let you play offline. Not here. Not but it would- it's, it would certainly be an interesting thing to do. But then I'd be picking up, like, a secondhand PS3 just <laughs> specifically for that shit. But it's certainly an interesting thought, like, I, it kind of- the idea kind of appeals to me, to be honest. But yeah, I- I, I think it, it has to be the PS3 version. Not in town. And then just not hook the console up to the internet so it doesn't get patched. So then we- it's like a true vanilla experience. Yeah, historically the monk has always had S-tier builds. The thing is, I don't think the playstyle appeals to everyone, and when people think about that character, they think it's a support character. Which it is, but... It's a really good character. It was funny because the way I, I played it, so the game came out and I had to work, I couldn't get the day off, so my friends started playing it and they all picked their classes and I was like, whatever, I'll just pick whatever's left. And whatever was left was the monk, but then it worked out because I enjoyed playing that class quite a bit. I sunk an absurd amount of time into that class compared to the others, like... It's not even a contest how- which class was my most played. So you would think this is this is stressful with all the little dudes running at me, but it's not bad. There are more necromancer builds at this arbitrary S tier. Yeah, but I guess the other thing to con it's not just tier. It's- you consider the history of the character and how many times the skills have been reworked because they were broken. <laughs> the amount of nerfs- yeah, like, the monk has received the most nerfs out of any class. And reworks because of skills being too good. There was a build that you could run where you would have 100% uptime on Serenity and basically be untouchable. And then they had to change it. They fundamentally change how skills have their cooldown start only after their, uh... Like, they have a, an activation point. And then the cooldown used to start at activation, but now it starts at the end of the animation. Which means... You can still do that build, but it's now there's like a downtime of, uh, like I think one second at best. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm talking like as a whole, right? Like historically, if you put everything together, the monk is hands down the best character in that game. Double axe. Probably not useful. usually appear from- oh, they're there. Jeez. Came from the other way this time. This dagger will separate the faithful from the fallen. Not in town. Not here. Yeah, Bladebone. Not interested in it. What is this ring you just gave me? Is it good? Uh, attack rating, double resist. Yeah, it'll replace this one here. There we go. Wait, that's cold. Wrong one. This one. Greetings. Uh, Plague Javelin, that's five, and now the rest will go into Stabby Stabby. Oh yeah, I should probably repair. Now you got me thinking about, like, getting a PS3 just to play Vanilla Diablo 3 for shits and giggles. Assuming you can play offline. It would, it would certainly be an interesting experience. It's a shame there's no backwards compatibility with, well, uh, uh, the PS3, because that stupid cell architecture, <laughs> it's just very bad decision to do that. Like, they wanted something powerful, but ultimately in terms of preservation of video games, very annoying. Why can't you just hook it up? Wait, what? Yeah, I don't know, because... I guess because the PC game is not offline. You can't... There's no offline mode on Diablo 3. Which, huh, that makes me think, like, are they going to do the same for 4? This has an offline mode, and it's pretty good. Okay, that's not true. Like, there is an offline mode... For console versions, like Reaper of Souls on Switch has an offline mode. Not enough mana. Hey, I don't know. I'll I'll look into it. I mean, if it doesn't cost much, sure. I can't imagine that game would be selling for much as well. That's that's the beauty of it, is I don't think the game is the problem. I think I could acquire that game on the cheap. I think the problem is going to be the console. And that I'm going to have a... Like, I'm, uh, what else am I going to use that PS3 for other than that? That's, that's the issue I'm having.
I, I didn't really play many games in the PS3 era, so there's not a whole lot of games that I would be, like, nostalgia for. If it costs over $100, don't go for it. Uh, I mean, that's the cost of, like, a... A triple A game, I guess, which is, is fine. That's like... There's some good PS3 games out there. I know there are. Like, not denying it. But... Good PS3 games that haven't been released on PS4. Or other systems. That I'd be willing to, like... The thing is, if they're really good PS3 games... The price to get them secondhand probably isn't going to be great. <laughs> and then, but you know what, then... Ugh, fucking hell. If I do this, this is just going to be, like, me adding to... Like, my abilities of playing retro games, but I don't really play that many retro games on stream. Like, I have... Very good capability in terms of uh, playing retro games. I should really, I should really start doing more retro games. I don't know. Not in town. Demon Souls is on PS3. Yeah, and they re-released it for PS5. I played it. It was great. I have Demon Souls on PS5. That was a launch title for the PS5. It was really good. Okay, well, at least I can throw javelins through here. I think it's just an inverted map. It's the same as before. You didn't know I had a PS5. Yeah. That's fair. It's kind of a... A fair assumption to think that I don't have one. But I did get one on launch, and kind of glad I did now, given one, in short supply for multiple years, and two, the price has gone up in Australia. And they've put in smaller heat sinks and stuff to, uh, like, I guess, lo save money on manufacturing and make more money, ultimately. So I'm very glad I have a, a launch console. Dude, I, I've loved my, I love my PS5. I mean, sure, there's not that many PS5 exclusive games. But in terms of playing PS4 games, like, I've got a newfound love for PS4. Because there's all these games that I can buy at cheap prices, right? Because they're old now, but they're still technically current generation. And they play a heck of a lot better on the PS5. Between load times and some of them being enhanced, like, it's great. I have a larger library of PS4 games than, uh, than the Switch. I think it's my largest library of games ever. The Wii would have been a close second. The PS4 was awesome, way better than the Xbox One. Yeah, that's because Microsoft fucked up and tried to appease TV executives. Like, it's gone down in history as, like, one of the worst product launches ever. It was so bad that all Sony did, they got up on stage and they talked about what the PS4 wasn't going to do, and what it did, instead of what it did. And they just absolutely slaughtered. Like, what a dumb idea. <laughs> hey, can I take a game over to a friend's house? No, they're gonna have to purchase a license and the console will have to be connected to the internet. Sorry, that disc copy of the game that you bought? Yeah, it has a license attached to it. But you can play TV shows on your Xbox. 
like man that was such a that was such a wild presentation I was kind of in disbelief over just how bad it was because in the lead up to it there were rumors floating around that the X the new Xbox would have an always online requirement just a bunch of stuff that was like, nah, come on, this is surely made up. But nope, it was real. The backlash was so strong that they had to change their plans on all that DRM shit they were going to do with it. Alright, I didn't know to go back through here. And it made one of the, the greatest marketing commercials... A tutorial on how to share games on the PlayStation 4. It was like a, a 15 second video. Half of that time was just a little fancy title screen that said how to share games on the PlayStation 4. And then it was just one dude handing another dude a copy of a game. <laughs> oh my god, and... I remember the, the guy was asked, um, what was his name? Like Don Matrick, I think his name was. So he was asked that a lot of Americans don't have access to good internet connections. So how can, you know, the Xbox one isn't for them. And then his response was, we have a product for that. It's called the Xbox 360. So his answer was, Oh, no, 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 you just buy our previous generation console if you don't want something connected to the internet permanently and requiring the internet. It's a fascinating watch, like... There's... There's a few YouTube videos where the way they tell that story is just through playing old interviews and that sort of stuff. Like, there's no commentary on it. The video explained itself. Just by, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I should be heading in this direction now. Wait, this is the... What? This map is... No, 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 no. I'm doing this wrong. I got an annoying map. I gotta go up and then around, I think. Because this leads back. You heard from a few sources the Series X is more powerful than the PS5. Uh, I mean... It's one of those things where that might be technically true, but... It might be one of those things where it's like, they're, they're citing lab conditions. Which, yeah, like... But if a game is poorly optimized, it doesn't fucking matter. That's the thing. It's like, I think... The consoles are on pretty equal footing. Wait, what? Oh my god, this map sucks. Like, I think when they talk about that stat, they talk about in terms of raw... ...horsepower numbers, so to speak. Like, I... Uh, that's the thing that isn't really considered amongst spec wars is like, yeah, I mean, you can have the specs, all the best specs in the world, but like the way a game is made, it might not necessarily take advantage of them and might ultimately render the same way it does on an inferior, quote, an inferior console. I 
I think, like, for me, Xbox... The game passing is very intriguing, especially if you play on PC as well. That is probably the only reason I would consider one. However, in terms of, I guess, the type of games that come out... I think the PlayStation library appeals to me more. Like, if you look at Microsoft exclusive, it's like, what? Gears of War, Forza, Halo... Um, I'm forgetting one. I need mana. But there's like a five, and I'm not really interested in those five. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm always of the mentality of just get whatever works for you. But don't, like, be be a fanboy and think that someone else's choice is inferior. Hey, King of Mayhem, what's up? <laughs> Hang on. Uh, let's do this. Eisenhearts? I think I already got that. I'll have that as backup gear. In case things go south. Alright, I finally made it to Karast, so... That was, uh, one of the more difficult maps to navigate. But yeah, I mean... <laughs> Even if you are, you were someone that is, like, very loyal to Xbox, I think even the people that were could not deny of how stupid that decision was with the, uh, the Xbox One. It's pretty dumb. Even though it didn't change their mind ultimately on what console they would buy, it's still, uh, yeah. It's gone down as, like, one of the w worst business decisions that companies made. It's up there with Windows Vista being disastrous. I think Microsoft could do something interesting if they do it, where if you purchase the Game Pass, you also get a Season Pass. Yeah, I mean, I think that's where things are heading, based on how they're purchasing certain companies. Um, particularly the games that have, like, these sort of live service type deals. I would imagine that's where they're headed. You were loyal until you got smarter. I mean, you can't fault yourself for being young and thinking things a particular way. I've always, uh, kind of stuck to stuff that I liked personally, but I never really said that other things that people were interested in were, like, crap. Just different, I guess. Fuck. I hate when this happens. <laughs> okay. Another great thing that happened during that, uh, Xbox show that they did for that announcement. When, uh, they were showing off the voice assistant features. Every time they would say, Xbox, go home. <laughs> People watching it, it on their console, yeah, would have the stream shut down. It was kind of funny. You did say they were crap unless they used the PS3 fucking nerds. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've never really been a loyalist. I just used whatever works for me.
All right, look at it this way. I used Windows for the longest amount of time for, like, work and stuff. Until Windows 8 were... Uh, yeah. Microsoft just decided to, uh... Make the UI horrible and remove the taskbar and... Sorry, the, ta the start menu. And go with massive fucking tiles. Something that made sense for touchscreens, but not really for traditional computers. And that interface annoyed me so much that I got a Mac. And I've been using a Mac for work since then. I mean, even Windows 10 kind of annoys me with its just... Oh, we're going to update your computer. And we're going to add some shit that you don't care about. Oh, by the way, we're also going to reset your audio settings. Like, you're going to have to route all your audio again. Because, you know, this was an important update. We need to ask you whether or not you're interested in our other suite of products, such as Office 365. By the way, would you like to use Office 365? No. Oh, that's fine. Well, how about Cortana? We noticed you don't have Cortana enabled since the last time you ran an update. Would you like to use Cortana? No. Oh, okay, that's fine. Did you know that we also have OneDrive? Would you like to use OneDrive as a backup solution? No. Oh, okay. Well, we noticed since your last update, you haven't tied a Microsoft account to your desktop user. Would you like to try trial, uh, you know, an Office account? <laughs> I don't know. I ran out, but, like, that's... I wish I was exaggerating, but that's what happens. I'd say every four months, that's what happens to me. Where they go through these series of questions, it's installed an update, and it asks me all this stuff again. Um, 100 defense versus missile hits blind target. That's pretty decent. How's my resistances? Eh, uh, drops cold resistance too much. Drop it on the mercenary. It's- it's just Windows 10, like, I feel like I don't own the operating system anymore. And the amount of times where I rebooted it and it's enabled some feature. Yes. Like, recently... Good morning. It- Enabled some sort of thing in the taskbar that displays the weather. And it just kind of brought back the equivalent of, like... When you would install a f some program on your computer. And then it would install a fucking toolbar in your web browser. All this trouble over like, time. that's what Windows 10 feels to me right now. Where, like, at any given point, it's like, oh, look, they installed a fucking toolbar on my computer without my consent. Sweet. Yes. Okay. Put this with the others. Gotta cover that laptop cam too. Dude, do you know what's a really scary photo? That has- that kind of got me into doing that. I didn't believe in that at first, but... There's a photo of, uh... They were doing a tour of Facebook offices. And they took this photo of Mark Zuckerberg sitting at his desk. And they put it on Instagram, right? Seems innocuous until you look at the picture. The dude has very thick sticky tape over the microphone and he's covered the uh the camera completely and i'm like if that dude's doing that a guy that like works for a company that is kind of known for snooping i don't know like it's a bit conspiracy theorist but at the same time it's like he's doing that for a reason
I mean, look up, look up the photo. <laughs> I'm not one to, like, go into conspiracy theory stuff and, like, dooming. However, in that regard, like... Yeah. I, I covered my webcam and always cover my webcam. The microphone don't give a fuck. It's like, whatever. I don't really say anything sensitive. They took a picture of him through a stationary camera. Was he smiling? No, he was like, he posed for it, obviously. But behind them is his computer. And anything that, uh, yeah, needed to be covered up was covered up. It was taped over. And not with normal tape. It was, this was like, the thick kind of tape, you know? Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like, uh, like your clear sticky tape. This was stuff that you probably use to, <laughs> to seal some pipes or some shit, <laughs> you know, like the industrial shit used in, in repairs. That's meant to, yeah, be super adhesive and, uh, have some resistance in it, doesn't break easily. I think if it was anyone but him, I would have thought of it as innocuous or, oh, okay, whatever, that person believes in that sort of stuff. But given the business uh, that company is in, <laughs> in terms of gathering data on people, hmm, I don't know. Oh, shit, jeez. Uh, that was... Those little skeletons, they explode. And, uh, they do a lot of damage. But I luckily was able to block. It's the guy that steals your data, the guy. Yeah. He was once a dude that, in his early days in college, said something along the lines of, People are fucking stupid for trusting me with their data. Or they're just- they just give me the information. Some, it was something along the lines of that, I'm paraphrasing it. Not here. Greetings. I'm making good timing, I think, with this act. Maze aside. I am gonna take a break for dinner, but I will say that this is probably all I'm gonna do all day, and then watch some movies. It's just, oh man, this week has been a long one, so this is my way to kick back. You want to get rid of Facebook, but your mom posts stuff on there. Yes, that is what we call the network effect, and that is something that Facebook heavily relies on to keep users using it. 
and you know, that's fine. They prey on the basic human need to communicate and belong. I'll never fault someone for using Facebook. But I will say, like, if you can, just get off it. It is my hope that that company in my lifetime just goes under. I really do hope that that will happen. I mean, hey, if they stick to this metaverse thing, then it might. <laughs> They're not having good luck in it. It's sit and rots on your phone. Yeah, but the fact that you have it there... And if you're logged in on a computer, um, websites have, like, a tracking thing, pretty much. So... Websites will know that it's you. Just because you're logged into Facebook. And... Try this for an experiment. Don't you, like, I, as hard as it might be, don't use it for a while. You'll see, this is what they, they start doing. If you don't use it for a while, they will start notifying, like, people that you're friends with to communicate with you. Or, like, just little things. Like, they'll receive emails of, like, the last post you did. Pretty much something to get other people to communicate with you. Or they'll, like, start sending you emails about the fact that you're missing out on stuff that some of your closest friends are doing. Like, it's pretty fucking evil. What the fuck? Okay. I seem to have gotten stuck in there. Sometimes the 2D graphics don't translate well to 3D. I was trying to get the, uh... the replenish, but okay. Hang on, what level am I? I'm 23. At 24, I'll get dodge, so I'll save the point. Good day. Not in town. But they do it between a lot of stuff. They'll do emails. Notifications. I think eventually they send you an SMS as well asking if you've forgotten your details to your Facebook account. Not in town. Assuming you registered your phone with them. Good day. Oh wait, I didn't repair. I did it again, I need to get rid of this waypoint. I keep going through it when it doesn't go anywhere, it's just autopiloting. Okay, this is one of the more dangerous parts now. Jeez, this is very populated, this part's usually empty. You need to make sure there's none of these assholes kind of hanging on the edge because they heal. These are enemies that I cannot directly face because they're they're super strong. And they got a curse on me. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
I should kill it. Cold Enchanted? Okay, I think this is the last one. Just gotta stay away from it because it's gonna explode into ice. Reign is renewed. What do curses do? Uh, the curse specifically, it makes you take more damage from melee sources, which is really bad. Certain enemies can one-shot you if you're not careful. Maybe not in this difficulty, but the next one onwards, it's, it's a huge concern, especially as a melee character. It's kind of fucked up. You have to make sure you have a high enough armor rating, otherwise... Yeah... I hate this map so much. Between the poison... The heavy hitters and the little dolls that explode into heavy damage, it sucks. This entire act is just obnoxious. Like, if I'm gonna die in any act, it's gonna be this one. Where did you come from? Not enough mana. That could wait, not that. This could be useful. Two socket? Damn it. One socket. Two socket would have been very nice. Okay, eventually I won't have to use stamina potions, just right now. It's the reality of it. Gotta deal with a mechanic that ultimately doesn't become a worry. Okay, uh, if I remember correctly, I gotta go anti-clockwise to find the waypoint. It doesn't always work, but we'll try. Shit, nope, nope, nope. Those little things are probably one of the worst enemies in the game. Oh no. Quick moving. Ah! Okay, get away, get away, get away, get away. They should hopefully die to the plague. Yeah, no, like... At this difficulty, it's manageable, but later on, if I don't react instantly, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> like, that's how bad it gets. <sighs> I have to invest points into the skill that, uh, like, offers a light source. Cause then it's easier to see that shit coming, like you enter a room and you sort of do a, a reveal of what's in the room. 
But right now, like, I'm kind of being ballsy and not using it. Okay, now we continue this way, and eventually we'll reach the, uh, the next door. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, there. Yeah, melee has a very, very rough time in this game. Does melee do the most damage? Uh, I mean, it's pretty subjective. That's the thing, it's like... This class, for example, can dish out, like, wave-clearing enemy attacks. And is also very strong at taking down bosses. But then the Barbarian... It's something like... It can struggle against hordes of enemies, but then against a single enemy, like, it can just shred its health very quickly. So, it, it's... Different strengths, I guess. Not in town. I wouldn't say one is objectively better than the other. With the exception of, like, if you're talking about being able to move through maps quickly, like, the Sorceress is the best one for that. Good evening. It does all I need, CC and single target damage. Uh, yeah. It's- it's a good all rounder. It's not the best single- It's not the best single target or the best, uh... Like... Crowd clearer. Cause... It's... It's cloud- uh, Crowd clearing... Is on the condition that they don't have lightning immunity. Whereas in the Sorceress, there's a lightning fire build you can do, which pretty much will, uh, yeah, deal with pretty, pretty much every single enemy in the game. And even still, even the pure ice builds, like, you can go through immunities because it's that strong. But in terms of boss clearing, it's a bit slow, like, the Amazonian can just stab and clear bosses very quickly. And is one of the few that is capable of, like, soloing the, uh, the Ubers, as they call them. Which is the super difficult endgame bosses. Oh, shit. Ooh, that's not good. I might have to warp out here. That's not a good- that's not a good double. I should not fight them. That aura, yeah, that was gonna fuck me up if I stayed there. I'll just have to walk back and then... I'm playing it safe. <laughs> I'm sure I probably could have killed it if I threw a javelin and ran away, but I just didn't want to take that risk. I think it's better to... Okay, do this. Uh, it's probably better to head this way. Yeah, okay. I just left them to the side there. Another elite, but I 
they were moving too quickly, and yeah, they were buffing one another. Oh, teleported and died. Okay. Alright, let me go get my follower back just to get some extra damage on it. Yes. That'll do. Not in town. Not in town. Greetings. I should be able to be fine here. Um, I should... How's my cold immunity? Okay, it's, it's fine. I don't need to adjust it. pretty lucky. I see enemies in the corner there. They could intervene at any minute. They haven't. Okay. <laughs> lucky. This fight could have gone a different way if uh, they decided to butt in. Uh, I mean, none of this stuff is probably stuff I'll use, so... Okay. Dust keep. All resistance is 15. Yeah? Okay. The call resistance is still low. It's not that low. No. Fire is going to be more of a thing here. I'll put this into storage. You're going to get food? Yeah, I'm probably going to do the same thing, actually. I've been playing for like five hours, so I think this is probably a good point to like take a bit of a break. Good evening. But yeah, this is all I'm gonna do today, so I'll do more like after I've gotten some food in me. I'm gonna watch some stuff in the meantime as well. All right, good progress. <laughs> Not dead yet, so. That's a plus. Definitely not the way I thought this was going to go, but whatever. Um, not level 24 yet. I'll hang on to it. Okay. Well, hope you enjoyed chilling and watching this. I will continue it uh, later today. I just need to get some food in me, so I'm going to go do that now. And I don't know. I'll probably be back in like an hour and a bit. We'll see. Depends what I get. But appreciate ya hanging out.